Hey, Rafid from Curly Brackets here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an interactive website using something called JavaScript. Now, hopefully you've been making some simple websites before watching this video. You know HTML and you know CSS, so you know how to make websites and you know how to style them. Now, there's a third part to making websites, which is how do you make your websites more interesting and come to life? For example, what happens if you have a website that looks nice because you've been using HTML and CSS, but let's say that you want to make a button. When you click it, something happens, something changes on your website. How do you go about doing that? Well, that's where the interactivity part comes in, and that is where JavaScript, the last part to the three web technologies, comes in. JavaScript is a programming language, one of the most popular programming languages in use today that lets you do all those things. Let me show you what we're going to be building today. So if you can see this uh, button right here, we have a nice website with this zero. Now, if I press here, the number changes and it changes by one and you keep pressing, it's going to increase more and more. Now, in fact, you can press here or you can really press anywhere and it changes. Now you can't do this with just HTML and CSS. There is some more programming happening here, some, some, uh, some more uh, sophisticated thing than what we've learned so far. So if you're ready, join me in uh, building this uh, website and I'll see you inside. All right, let's uh, get started. I'm gonna be using Replit to make my website. And if you're using the same thing, you wanna use the HTML, CSS, JavaScript template. And then let's call it, uh, let's see, uh, using JavaScript, keep it simple, and then go ahead and make a new REPL. And then what I'm gonna do is open this up in a new tab, fix this little thing, there we go. And let's clear this one up and get rid of these and zoom in on this one. There we go. All right, so what have we been doing so far? I've already looked at HTML and CSS, and I know you know this already, but just, let's do a quick recap on what HTML is. So HTML is responsible for the content and structure for the website, right? So you wanna go ahead and make um, some text, let's say, appear, hello world. Well, that's HTML. Then you wanna make it so that the text is like of a um, heading type. So it's like bigger, slightly bold. Uh, again, you enclose the text with h1 tags and that's how you make that happen so let's do that now h1 hello world like that and then make sure that that appears here and we got that great let's zoom in a little bit here too okay that's html now css is where we apply some style to it so i'm going to style this with color equal orange that's, there we go. So that's CSS. And you know, you've, you've seen CSS more before probably is that you can keep it here in line CSS, or you can put it in the head tag using style tags, or you can put it in a se separate file, which really is the best way of doing it. But I'm just, you know, showing you that uh, this is how you can also use HTML. So that's, uh, that's CSS. Uh, now, how does JavaScript come into play here? Well, Let's say that we wanted to do something. If you press this text right here, this hello world text, we want something to happen. In fact, you know what? You know those pop-ups that you probably have seen on websites, those annoying pop-ups that appear sometimes that you have to press OK to get rid of them? That's actually done using JavaScript. So let's try to make the, one of those appear by pressing this hello world text. So in a similar way to how we used CSS inline using style, we can actually write some JavaScript right here inside of this H1 tag. Let me show you how. So we wanna write on click here, on click, and then equals quotation marks like this. You wanna use double quotes now, okay? Because we're gonna be using two separate types of quotes. Now inside of here is where you can write some JavaScript code. Now we're gonna 
write a lot of JavaScript in this video, but let's write the very simple piece of code here, which is just going to be something called alert. Now, this is something inbuilt into JavaScript, it comes with JavaScript, and you can run this thing, and it's called a function, and we're going to you know, talk a little bit more about what functions are a little bit later in the in the um, video, but let's just use this thing now. So alert, and then I have to write quote uh, sorry brackets like this, and then inside of here I can write a little message. Now I could write um, double quotes here, but I wanna I, I wanna make it uh, so that it doesn't like confuse it with the, these ones. So I'm gonna just keep it you know different just to make it simpler. I'm going to use single quotes here. And then here I'm going to write hello world again. So now if this is done correctly, something now should happen. So let's take a look here. So refresh now. And then when I press here, nothing happens, of course. Of course, sorry, I pressed around here. If I press here, as you could see, uh, there is this pop-up that appears where it says hello world here. And you can press OK to stop it. So this is where the interactivity part comes in. Now let's look a little bit closer into what we can actually put in here. So right now I have a message and I can always write text by writing these uh, quotation marks around the text. But I can also do something more interesting which is use numbers. For example, if I wanted to say 50 here and then run this thing, let's try it out. Now it's going to say 50. Now that's just number, single numbers. But what if you wanted to do some math? What if you wanted to do 50 plus 50? Well, so far using HTML and CSS, there really is no way of computing anything. You know, uh, you can't really do any computation using CSS. You can't tell it to, for example, give you the sum of 50 plus 50. You, you definitely can't do it with uh, HTML either, but you can do it with JavaScript. So let's take a look here. Refresh and then click and I got the sum 100. Now this is really interesting because this is where the programming part um, comes into play. HTML and CSS are known as coding languages. Okay, you're writing code, you're, you know, you're generating a result from that, but they're not programming languages. Okay, you can't really do any math or any computation, you can't really write any algorithms using those languages, but you can using JavaScript. So that is, you know, if you've heard the term coding and programming, that's usually the distinction between those two. So JavaScript definitely is a programming language, while CSS and HTML are not. Okay, so I can, I can uh, write JavaScript here for sure, but as we discovered with CSS, really is not a great idea to be writing it here, at least not if you're writing a lot of stuff, right? That's kind of more general uh, to the page. So what we're going to come back to this a little bit later, but let's take it away for now. Take this thing away, and we're going to take a look at the other two files that we got when making this uh, uh, REPL. We got the CSS file and we got the JS file. Let's take a look at that one. This is where we can write some JavaScript. Now, if you've noticed here inside of HTML, index.html, I'm sorry, uh, there is this line of code here on line 11 that says script source script JS. All this is doing is that it's getting all the JavaScript from this file and it's using it in, in the website. So that's how we know that th those two things are linked. Similar to the way that you know CSS file are linked here in the head um, in the head tag. So we know that whatever we write here is going to be used. So let me get rid of this again and then start writing some JavaScript. Okay. So let's see here. We can definitely write alert here again. Alert function. And then in here I can write, you know, again hello world. Now this before when we it only appeared when we clicked the hello world text, but now it's going to appear just right out of the box when the page loads. Reload and then it appears, right? This makes sense. Uh, so what can I do here? Well, I can definitely write some text here like this, but I could also 
use something called a variable. So let's say that I wanted to say something like, I don't know, hello world, and then I'd say, my name is Rafid, and then I'm gonna say, Rafid is 28 years old. And then I'll say, Rafid uh, lives in Norway. Okay, so let's run this first, see what happens. So, Refresh, and then we got hello world. My name is Rafid, 28 years old, live in Norway, okay? Simple stuff, we're just using the alert function here. Now, let's take a look at the code a little bit more closely. I'm definitely seeing that I'm rewriting some stuff here. For example, I have my name mentioned here, here, and here three times. Now, let's, let's think about what could happen now. Let's say that I'm writing a program and I'm using the name several times, maybe three, maybe 30, maybe 100. What happens if you want to change the name for some reason? Maybe you don't want to have one name in the program. Maybe you want to make it the name of the user. Maybe you want to make it a name of a different person. Point is you want to change it, right? In this way, you got to change it three different times, right? But what if we used a little different type of thing here to make it make the code much, much better? What if we said, rather than writing my name here, let's make a little container, let's make a little thing called name, and then whatever name we're using in the program, we'll just set it equal to whatever name we wanna use it. That is a big concept in programming called variables. So let's take a look at how we can create a variable using JavaScript. Let's go up here and make our first variable. Variables you can uh, create in different ways, but we're gonna use something called VAR, keyword var, and you'll see that it'll turn blue when you've done written it. That's that way you know that it's something inbuilt in JavaScript. And then we're gonna write space, and then we're gonna come up with a name for a variable. So in this case, let me call it name like this. So here I'm gonna say name and then equals, and then I'm gonna set it to some value. Now, you might've noticed here that I'm using, whenever I'm writing some text, I'm using these quotation marks, and you know the more programming term for this is a string. So I'm gonna use a string here, and I'm gonna put my name inside of it. So the variable name now is pointing to uh, this term right here, Rafid. So what happens now if I, let's say I say alert and then name. Well, it's gonna give me an alert box and then it's gonna just show this instead, right? Wherever we're using this name variable, it's gonna show me this. So let's try that out now. Run, shows my name, and then of course it goes through the rest of the program. You gotta press okay, it's a little bit annoying, but let's get through it. There we are. So now let's make our code a little bit better. So wherever it's Rafid, I'm gonna change it with name. Let me get rid of this. And the way you can say this text and then combine it with this thing, there's, there are several ways of doing this, but the easiest way would be just using a plus symbol here and just using name. And then doing the same thing here, name plus and name plus like this. There we go. And then let's take a look at that, my name, and then my name is that. So it runs the same program. There we go, uh, which means that it works. Now, let's say that we do something different here. Let's say that we, in between these three, let me get rid of this one, I am changing the the contents of the name variable. How do you, how do I do that? Well, if you wanna change it, you can just say name again, and then you can say equals, and then you change it to something else. Let's say we change it to uh, John. So now let's see what we can get. So now it's saying hello world, and then I said my name is Rafid, 
And then it says John is 28 years old. John lives in Norway. So it's kind of in the name variable, you know, variables. It kind of means that it can change. Uh, whenever you want to change a uh, variable, you can just assign it a new value by using this equal sign like this, right? So let's take a look at exactly what we want to do. We, we uh, on our website, we wanted a number zero, and then we wanted to change it, right? We wanted to change it by one. When did we want to do that? When we, whenever we clicked, we wanted to change it by one. So let's go a little bit back to that. So I'm going to use, I'm going to get rid of this. And then I'm going to make, I'm going to use a variable for this because I know that variables can be changed. And then I'm thinking that I'm probably going to start with zero and then I want to change it by one each time. So I know that much. I don't necessarily know how to do everything, but I know that much. So let me start with what I know. So I'll do var and then I'll come up with a variable name. I'll call it counter and it's counting up so it kind of makes sense counter and I'll put it equal to zero now how could we change this with the knowledge that we have so far well we could do something like we could do alert and then we could do counter and then we could do something like um, counter is equal to one and then we could do alert again counter and then we could do counter equals two and then alert counter again. Let's take a look at what we get here. Alert zero and then one and two. Okay, so this works, but it's kind of not very sophisticated because we're, we're having to do this every single time and then we're just, you know, showing the, the number. Now we're actually writing in the exact number that we want. But what are we really doing? What we're really doing is just we're taking whatever value of counter that already exists, and then we're just adding one to it. So let's change our code now to kind of reflect that. So how can I actually do that? Well, I already have the counter defined up here to be zero assigned to be zero. So I could say here instead of just saying one, I can say take the old value of counter, which in this case is going to be zero for the first time, and then just add one to it, right? And then here, hopefully by this time, it's going to be have changed to one now from zero. And then by this time, we want to just do the same thing over again, counter, and then we'll say plus one again. So let's, let's take a look at it now. Zero, one, two, get the same result, but much better code. Okay, so we still have another thing that I don't really like, though, is that we're kind of doing the same thing here. And if we want to keep on going, we're just going to have to copy and paste this. Copying and pasting usually in programming is a bad idea. There's usually is a better way of doing it. If you're doing the same thing more than once, you want to look for a different way of doing it. So let's take a look at how we can do this differently. So I'm going to get rid of this. And this is where we come to functions, which is also a very big concept in programming. Now, what is a function? Well, a function is really just a piece of code. It could be one line of code. It could be five lines of code. It could be 100 lines of code. And probably a good idea to keep it as simple as possible. So, you know, the fewer lines, the better. But usually a function is supposed to do one thing. So you can have a function for showing an alert box on a website. You have the alert function that comes built in in JavaScript. There's a lot of these built in JavaScript functions that you can use out of the box. But you can also make your own functions to do different things. Now, how about we make a function that does one thing it or maybe it does two things but it's really related to one thing it changes the counter up one so it adds one to it and then it shows an alert box uh, showing the current counter so the way we make a function is just similarly as we when we make a variable we just write var and then this we just write function to make a function 
And then we write the name of the function. This is something that you can come up with yourself. And I'm going to call this thing count. And you want to write these brackets because that's the way that functions are defined. And we're just going to keep it blank inside. But later on, we'll see, not in this video, but in other videos, how you can use arguments in here, which is like you can give your um, you can give your um, function some inputs and then you can use that inside of the function. But let's just keep it simple for now. So let's do that. And then what do we want to be inside of the function? Well, whatever we're going to put inside, we're going to say that we're going to put between these curly brackets. I'm going to write a set of curly brackets opening and closing and then press enter here and whatever goes inside here is going to be inside of the function. So let me write here. First thing I want to do is counter equals counter plus one like this. That's what I want to do. And then let's just do inside here I'll just do alert. And then what do we want to show? We would just want to show the counter. So let's Let's see here. Let's run this thing and see what happens. Well, nothing happened. Why is that? We wrote the function. Why didn't anything happen? Hmm. Well, just because you have a function laying around doesn't mean that you've used it. You have to explicitly tell JavaScript to call a function when you've defined it. If you don't, you haven't said that you want to use it. It's just laying around, not being used. So we've got to now explicitly tell it, we made the function, now we want to use it. So under the function, I'm going to write count like this. This is how you call the function by writing this part of the function. So let's just call the function once. Refresh, we get z uh, one. That makes sense because we started zero, now we get one. Now. Let me call it one more time. Let me call it once more. Once and twice. You can probably see where I'm going. However many times you call it, it's completely up to you. It's just going to give you a count up to that number. So we get five in the end. So we're, we're getting closer to what we want. So let's get rid of these. So now we have a function called count that whenever you use it, it just counts, use, uses the counter variable, and then it changes it. It increases it by one, which is what we want. Now, we're, we're not there yet because it doesn't look very good. And you know, furthermore, there's really no connection between what the JavaScript is doing and what the website looks like. So we got to connect those two things. But at least the math part of it, we've got done. So let's take a look now how we can connect what's happening on the website and what the JavaScript is doing uh, rather than just using alert boxes, which kind of seems a little bit disruptive to me. So first thing I'm going to do is go into the HTML file and change this thing. Let's see, change this thing to a zero like this. And I'm going to get rid of this for now. We're going to make our website really cool looking like I showed you uh, in the beginning. But that part is most mostly CSS. So we can do that later. Let's just get the JavaScript interactivity part of it working. So here what I want to do is, let's see here, I want to have a zero here. And of course, when I press it, it should go up by one. So Let's see here. So how do I kind of connect this, this number so that it changes based on the JavaScript that we're writing in the other file, the script.js file? Well, we can use that by giving it an ID. Remember, you can get give classes and IDs to, uh, to h1 tags or you know any tags, really. I'm going to go ahead and write an ID here. Now, why ID and not a class? Well, ID kind of works here because ID is supposed to be only used once for one thing. So I know that it's only going to be used for this tag. 
and, and, and no others. So I'm going to give this ID of counter. So this is kind of the thing that is going to let us take something in the HTML and then connect it to what's happening in the JavaScript uh, file by using this thing here. So what is the, what is the thing that I want to change? I want to change this number right here. So I got to find some way of getting this number inside of my JavaScript. So let's go to the JavaScript file. And I'm going to go up here. So we've already written a lot of the program, but I want to show you something here. How do we get to the website? Well, this whole website is, is an object called the document object. So just let, let's just write document. Let's just try to change the website using JavaScript. So inside of document, I can use this function that you can use within document, also called a method, called get element by ID. Okay, so I'm going to be using this and I'm going to give it some input, which is going to be an ID, and I can get to that element. So I'm because this is a function, I'm going to give it this. And then I'm going to inside of here, write counter. So what does this mean? Okay, so the first thing meant that we got to the document, which is the whole thing, we don't want to change the whole thing. But the whole thing contains this little thing. And we already gave it the idea of counter. So by getting this, we are at on this object. Now, do you want to change the whole object? Well, not really. Because what is the whole object? Well, if we go here, it's going to give you this whole thing, we definitely want to change don't want to change the whole thing. We want to change only this part. So to do that, we're going to target the inner HTML. So only this part. Let's go back to the JavaScript again. Now there's some jumping back and forth. I'm going to then say inner HTML. Now we're at that zero. Now, once we've done this, what can we do? Well, now we can say using the equal sign, we'll change it to something else. So let's try it. Let's let's change it to my name. What do you think will happen now? Let's see. So right now is zero. Let me refresh the page. And then it changes to this. Well, did, wasn't it zero? Well, it was zero for just like a split second. You, you couldn't even uh, notice it. And then it immediately changed to what we wrote here. Because it the web, as the website was loading, zero loaded. And then right away, the JavaScript ran. And then it changed it to this. But this is exactly what we want, right? This is what will let us change the number. So I'm going to change this. Let's say, can we do numbers here? We definitely can. And then it changes to five. You, you might be able to see, I can't say it's because it's happening so fast, but it's changing from zero to five. So let's try to copy this part. And then I'm going to get rid of this. And then inside of this count function, I'm going to put it inside here like this. So now whenever we call the count function, it's going to change. Now, do you remember from the beginning of the video how we could write some JavaScript in the HTML tag? Well, let's go back. Here, you might remember, we could say on click. And we used something called alert in here, which was an inbuilt JavaScript function. But now we've written our own function. And since we've loaded in the file here, we can call that function. So let's say 
let's say here, what did we call the function? Let's take a look. We call that function count. So I'm going to go back to my HTML file. And I'm going to say on click count. And I got to remember because it's a function, I always got to remember those brackets. So it's going to call that function now. Let's take a look if this thing works. Zero, it says. Okay. Ah, it gives me an alert box and then it changes it to five. And then every time I, I press it, it changes to five. So it stays the same and then it gives me this alert. So I definitely don't want the alert. So I gotta get rid of that line. So let's get rid of the alert. And what do I wanna do? Well, this is where I don't wanna change it to five. I wanna change it to the new number. So I should copy this and I want to put it above this so that the number changes first and then it is shown on the website. So in here, instead of five, let me just say counter. And now, if I, I'm sorry, refresh again now, and I say click, 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 there we go. It is working. It doesn't look amazing, and we're going to look at that next, how we can change the CSS and so we can make it prettier, but functionally, it's it, we're there it works so let's now look at how we can make the website look much nicer so <clears throat> let's take a look here the first thing i want to do is change the font from this default font to something you know a little more attractive so i'm going to use something called google fonts you want to go to google and search for google fonts so Google does a lot of things and it does a lot of it for free. And one of those things that it offers you for completely for free is something called Google fonts, which means it's going to give you free fonts for you to use. And you just got to put like a line or two of code in your, in your website. And then you can use all the font that fonts that it has available. So that makes it really simple because, you know, fonts can be a little bit tricky. If you're using a font that you have on your computer and using on your on your website, unless the other person has that same font on their computer, it's not going to look very good. It's just going to default to some other, you know, font that everyone has. But Google, pretty much everyone in the world has access to Google, so you can just make it so that you know it, the font is just loaded from Google servers. Let's take a look at how we can do that. So I'm actually using a font called. Uh, these are, by the way, all the fonts that you can use and I'm I think I'm using Calistoga let me take a look here Calistoga that's the one I'm using so if you want to see how the font is going to look on your website you can actually change this and you can write your name there or number or whatever and see does it look good yes it does okay let me go ahead and use that so let me write 150 looks quite nice so if you want to use this font you just got to press this plus button right here when you press that, it's gonna make this thing appear. Let me make this a little bit. There we go, this thing, family selected. And you wanna open that up. And then here, there's going to be this embed font code. So it's gonna say, to embed your selected fonts into a website, web page, copy this code into the head tag of your HTML document. So let me copy this part, copy. And then let me go to my code and let me paste it right here under the title. There we go. So what is this really doing? Well, it's getting the font from the Google, a Google website, and then it's letting you use it. So this really is, you know, kind of CSS that you're loading in from not your project but from uh, from Google servers so as long as you have this thing up here you can use this font inside of the CSS or in my, you know for your website so I'm gonna go to uh, I'm gonna go to um, my CSS file and here I'm gonna apply this font so how can I target my uh, number here we already wrote a, uh, used an ID called counter so I can use that so let me write hashtag 
counter. That's how you kind of target an ID. And then let me write curly brackets in here. I'll write font family. And then I'll say, what was the name again? Calistoga. Calistoga like this and with a semicolon. Let's take a look and it changes. See, looks much nicer. So we got the font. Now what's next? Well, I definitely want to make it larger. The text. I think I have font size 150 pixels here. So I'm going to say font size, make it 150 pixels, could be even nice and big. Looks very big now because I'm zoomed in. But let me zoom out all the way. There we go. Looking good. And then I want to change it to a color. I've already gone ahead and picked a nice looking color here that we're using we use in curly brackets. It's going to be this orange, which has Xcode 43. There we are, nice orange. And so all I got to do now is center it. So it's right here centered and centered both vertically and horizontally. And then I'm going to change the background color. So the background color is, I would definitely want to target the body like this. And here I'll say background color, and I'm going to say this is going to be 35, 39, 55. It's going to give us that nice dark blue color that we use. And then I'm going to use um, something called Flex, Flexbox in uh, CSS to center this thing in the middle, both vertically and horizontally. So if you want to do that, you can say first display flex. And then I'm going to say align items center. So what is this going to do? Well, let's let's see here. So it aligns it here, but we're not done yet. We also want to do uh, justify content center like this. There we go. So that aligns it there. But now why is it not aligning it vertically properly though? Well, it's because this this whole body we got to give it some height because um, what it has so far now is just this text. So it really, it's only this big, right? And so it has centered it in, or it has centered it within this box right here. And since we're, we don't have anything else, we got to explicitly tell this thing, the height of the whole thing should be the height of whichever window that you're viewing it on. Well, then we want to go here and then write height. And here, of course, you can go, you know, you can go 500 pixels like this, and it's going to make it bigger. And if we go like a thousand pixels, it's going to make it even bigger. There we go. But we, we, we don't know how big the display is. So we want it to be dynamic. Because, you know, if, if the display was smaller, it's still, you know, not going to be in the center. I don't like that. So I'm going to make it something called VH. And this is automatically going to give it the vertical height of the um, of the window that you're on. So if I use this now, now, if you go and you make the window smaller, see, it, it stays in the center, which is exactly how I want it. Looks really nice. So now let's see if this thing works. Click, click, click. It works, it works, it works. Great. It increases. Now, there's a little problem here because if I press it anywhere here, it doesn't work. It only works here. And then it has that annoying thing of, um, you know, showing this highlighter, you know, so it's kind of clashing with the cursor press. I wouldn't, I want to remove those things. So let's look at that next. All right, let's start with uh, how we can make it so that when we press anywhere here, the counter also uh, increases. So what are we doing in this HTML file here? Let's go back to the HTML. Well, we have this H1 displaying the text and we're using this on click event. And here we're calling this function, which is making the counter go up. 
But what if we said, let's not do it here, but let's do it on the body tag. Well, the body is the whole document, right? And we've already made it so that the height is the um, vertical height of the whole uh, um, window. So we should be able to just make it so that we can copy this, remove it from here, and then just apply it to the body like this. Let's take a look at that. And there you have it. It works here and here. It works anywhere, basically. You can press anywhere, and then it increases the counter. So that's we're, we're basically done here. You could stop here if you wanted to. But, you know, I'm one of those, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. And it's really bugging me that if I'm going really fast, if I'm going like this, even if I'm not going fast, there's this highlighter that is coming up. Not always, but a lot of times. It's really bugging me. There is a way to go into the CSS and say, just block all this highlighting. You make it so that the user can't highlight stuff like this or select stuff. It's it's a little bit of, you know, it's 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 a couple lines of code because we, we want to make sure that it works on every browser. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do that, but I'm going to have to take a look at my notes here because I don't remember this off the top of my head. Let's see here. So we want to do go to the CSS. This is kind of, kind of how it is when you get to more complicated stuff. You want to make things look nice is that you got to do a lot of these kind of fixes because there's you know always something that isn't working right and you got to you know add some code to make it look exactly right. So I'm going to do this to the body here and see here this should work for all browsers. So I'm going to write web kit touch uh, call out first and I'm going to put that to none. And then I'm going to say uh, let's see here. I'm going to say web web kit user select and then set that also to none. And then I'll say k html user select none and then mos user uh, select this is going to be probably for mozilla firefox and then ms user select none like this and then user select none like so sure that you can see all of that and just to make it a little nicer let's align this even though that doesn't really matter here uh, just to make it look nice I'm gonna just put some tabs there there we go so now hopefully this is going to work regardless of whatever type of you know um, browser you're using let's take a look here refresh and is it working yes it is See, no highlighter here. And you can click and click until you get tired of clicking. And there you have it. That is how you use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to make an interactive website where the user can actually interact with your website and change it depending on user input. I hope you really liked watching this tutorial, and I hope you have some understanding of how websites work now. From HTML, the structure and the contents, to CSS, the styling, you know, having these nice colors, orange, different types of fonts, to using JavaScript, where the, where the programming part comes in, where you can interact with the website and you can change it. The best way to learn more about this and get better at making websites is to make tons of different types of websites for practice. And whenever you get stuck, feel free to use our videos on our website and on, on our YouTube channel. And uh, feel free to use Google because Google is really a great resource when it comes to this. And you can basically, whatever you want to search for, whatever you want to learn about, whatever you want to change, you can pose as a question and include all the different terms that you need. And you're going to get tons of great resources out there, websites that will show you exactly how to do things, exactly how to use different uh, parts of CSS to get your website looking the way that you want you know, and all the other things. So again, I hope you liked uh, watching the video. 
check out curlybrackets.no for more things, um, tutorials like this. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.